What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean Dalton. I am a travel and lifestyle photographer and I teach you how to become the best photographer that you can be. Today we're gonna to be talking about and I'm gonna be showing you how you can edit exactly like your favorite photographer. And that really could be anybody. That could be somebody that you've been following on Instagram for a really long time, that somebody that you've always looked up to. It could be a photographer from your town that you've always really liked. Um, it could be me, who knows? Whoever that photographer is, uh, I'm gonna teach you how you can edit like them today. Before we jump into the content guys, I just wanna remind you I'm giving away a free orange and teal preset pack for mobile and desktop. So you guys can use those wherever you want, whatever is suitable for you. Um, I also have install guides, so I'll show you guys how to install those. Super, super simple. Um, and those are for you to enjoy. So please head to the website, download those, uh, and I really hope you like them. Also, if you guys are new here, please consider subscribing or we're dropping new videos every Friday and all of which are gonna help you become a better photographer. So please consider subscribing if you're new here. But all right, so how do you edit like your favorite photographer? Say there's a photographer you just loved forever and you just really wanna edit like their photos and you've tried in the past, but no matter what you do, you just can't get the tones right or you can't get the colors right or something is just not right. How can you edit like them? So I figured out a process and a framework that you guys can use to kind of break down every photographer's images, uh, break down what they're doing and just try to deconstruct their edits so you can get a similar look. And it's actually pretty simple. So let's dive into it. I'm gonna show you guys how I would do it with a photographer that I've always really liked. So the first step is just to find that photographer, figure out who they are, figure out who you wanna edit like, you know, go through your inspiration file, find that photographer, and then just start looking at their photos. One thing to know is when you're looking for a photographer, you have to make sure your content is similar to theirs in some way. For example, if you're trying to edit like Benjamin Hardman who shoots in the polar ice caps in Iceland, but all your photos are from the jungle, it's gonna be pretty hard to make your photos look similar to theirs simply because the subject matter is so different. So it's really gonna help if your photos are similar to the photographer that you look up to in some way. So once we found a photographer and we found some photos that we really like, step two is to download those photos. Now before you do that, I just wanna hammer in this point that these are not your photos, these, are, these don't belong to us. We're just using them, we're gonna be uploading them into Lightroom so we can look at them next to our work, but we are in no way gonna be posting this work, we're not gonna be sharing this work. It doesn't belong to us, it belongs to the photographer, and it would be immoral for us to do that and illegal in some situations. So we're downloading the photos, but we're not gonna be sharing these anywhere. So I'm gonna show you guys how you can do that. And I'm gonna be showing you how to do it from Instagram. So a photographer that I've always looked up to, a photographer that I just really love his work is uh, Jack Harding. He shoots a lot of adventure, a lot of travel, watches, cars, portraits, just some really cool stuff. And, and just somebody that I've always really loved their work. So I'm gonna be trying to mimic uh, Jack's editing style today because I think Jack's editing style is, is really cool. He's got some really golden skin tones, nice, nice blues. It's crispy, but it's soft at the same time. Uh, high contrast, but nice soft tones, really natural, warm colors. It just looks really good. So once you're kind of scrolling their Instagram, you found a few photos that you really like, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up here, you're gonna open that photo and you're gonna click copy link. Now you're gonna have the link copied and you're gonna go to this website called downloadgram.com. There are other websites that pretty much do the same thing, but essentially it's just allowing you to download um, a photographer's photo. And you're gonna hit download and then you're gonna actually download the image. Sometimes an ad will pop up, just ignore it. Uh, then you're gonna right click, save the image, and then you're just gonna save it to wherever place you're gonna keep these photos. I keep them in a, in a folder called editing inspiration. And then I have a few photographers that I like here. So I'm just gonna save it under Jack Hardy. So once you have four photos that you really like, we're gonna basically turn those into a grid. We're gonna put them four next to each other just so we can see a few different examples of this photographer's work. Um, and then once we have those examples, we're actually gonna import that into Lightroom and then put it right up against our photo that we're gonna edit. So we can just reference it instantly and just make sure the tones are really matching up. So in order to make something like this, it's pretty simple. You open up Photoshop and you can use an app for this too. Like there's so many ways to do this, but Photoshop is the easiest for me. You're gonna go up to file, you're gonna hit new. We just make a canvas that is eight by 10, make sure it's 300 pixels per inch. Hit create. Now we have this here, and then all we're gonna basically do is go into the folder where we saved those photos and drag and drop them in. And then we're gonna hold shift and drag it and just make sure it's four by five, four by five right there, boom, hit enter. And then we can just drag and drop the other photos in as well. 
And this doesn't have to be exact. Like we're just using it as a reference. So it really doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't matter at all. Um, but you can see with the photos that I've selected here, I've selected a bunch of photos from the beach. Um, I'm gonna be editing a beach photo and I just really like how Jack edits his, his beach photo. They're, they just look really nice. So I found four of Jack's photos that he took um, at the beach in different parts of the world. I think these are from Portugal. They might all be from Portugal. I'm not really sure, but they all kind of have a similar color scheme here. The blues kind of match, the, the oranges, the skin tones, everything looks really nice. So I'm gonna be trying to mimic this editing style. Once we create this, all we're gonna do is go here, file export, quick export as PNG, and we're going to save it to that same folder where we had it. So I'm gonna save it under Jack Harding here, and I'll say Jack Harding inspo. Hit save, boom. Now that we've created this grid, we're going to be basically importing this photo into Lightroom. And once you import it, a really easy way to keep track of these photos is to color code it uh, and then color code the photo that you're gonna be editing as well. So I color coded this image of Jack's images as purple. So I went to set color label, I hit purple, and then I did that as well for the image that I'm gonna be editing. And then I went to all photographs and I just filtered by purple down here. So then only those photos will show up. Now that we have got these photos in Lightroom, it's time to put them next to each other. And we can do that by clicking RA right here and then just dragging Jack's photos up next to it. So now we have a visual representation of their photos right next to ours. We can see exactly how the tones are lining up, if it looks similar or whatnot. And at this point, it's time to basically deconstruct the edits and really figure out what the photographer is doing to make the photo look that way. And there's really three things that you need to be focusing on and we're gonna take these down one by one. Those three things are lighting, color, and then detail, so the texture of the photo. So lighting refers to essentially how bright or how dark the photo is, as well as the tones. Is it soft? Is it hard? Is it high contrast? Is it low contrast? So everything kind of related to that. Color is basically the colors in the image. Is it warm? Is it cold? Is it saturated? Is it desaturated? Are there certain colors that are desaturated and others that are very saturated? Um, and then the last part is detail. And that's kind of like the texture. Is there sharpening? Is there clarity? Is there grain? Did the photographer add any texture to kind of make it more interesting? And basically what we do when we're mimicking these edits is we just break them down one by one. We start at the top and then we move on to color, lighting, color, and detail. And then after that, we kind of make some fine touches. And I promise you, your photo will look very similar to the photographer that you look up to, as long as you're kind of following this framework and taking it step by step. Now, before we do this, one thing to note is if you're not super well versed in Lightroom, that's totally okay. I mean, you're gonna learn over time. And this is a great exercise for kind of learning to understand how certain things are gonna affect your photo within Lightroom. So you're gonna learn, you know, how the basic adjustments are gonna affect your image. You're gonna learn how the color adjustments affect your image. And we're gonna be kind of using everything here today. So I'm gonna start at the top here and we're going to work down one by one. All right, so starting at the top, we're gonna to start looking at the way Jack uses lighting. So something to note is all of these photos were shot at sunset. Maybe maybe not this one down here, but these are definitely sunset. Um, and they're, they're absolutely beautiful. I mean, the, the colors are nice and warm. They look really nice. But in terms of lighting, they're dark and moody, but they're also bright. So they're, you know, nice and evenly exposed. So we're gonna try to get a nice even exposure. We're gonna do that by just bringing up our exposure here, making sure everything is nice and exposed. And then we're gonna start adding back in that contrast with the basic adjustments here. Now with lighting, there's two ways to adjust it in the basic adjustments and then the tone curve. And we're gonna be basically moving between these two as we edit this. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna reduce the highlights and maybe leave the shadows there, maybe go down a little bit, increase the whites to make sure we have some nice contrast. And then I'm actually gonna go down on the blacks to really enhance that contrast. So that's just kind of the basic lighting adjustments here. But what's really gonna make your photo look similar to the photographer's is right here in the tone curve. Now Jack has some really deep, dark tones down here and it's very clear that he used uh, a selective filter, which we're gonna do later. But we do wanna make sure our blacks are nice and deep uh, and we can do that by kind of making a basic S curve here and just dragging down those dark areas, really enhancing those dark areas but then softening them out by raising this tail right here. So I'm just softening those blacks out and then I'm gonna bring back in some of the highlights by just kind of making this into an S-curve. Not too much, I'm gonna do too much here. 
And the thing with the tone curve is it's pretty tricky. We're basically moving back and forth between the tone curve and the basic adjustments because they affect, they both affect each other. And it's kind of a fine tuning thing. You kind of just have to keep moving between the two and trying to get the tones to look similar. And we might come back to this, but, but for the most part, that looks pretty good. Maybe it's a little bit dark. Not bad, could probably spend more time on this, but I think it looks, it looks pretty good. So now that we've got the lighting, now it's time to move on to color. And Jack's colors are very warm. Now in terms of adjusting color, there's a, there's a few ways to do it in Lightroom, but the three main ones are the white balance, the HSL sliders, hue, saturation, luminance, the split toning, where we can add colors into the images, and then also down here in color calibration. We don't need to use all of those, and in fact, we can just kind of take it one by one. So starting at the top with white balance, Jack's images are warm. His skin is nice and orange, so I'm, the first thing I'm gonna do is just raise that color temperature up to a pretty pretty far level. And honestly, that already looks pretty similar to, to Jack's photos here. Once we've done that, we're gonna go down to the HSL sliders, and now I just wanna look at the, the major colors in the images and make sure they kind of match Jack's here. So. First thing I notice is that our blues, our blues are off. Our blues here are kind of purpley, but Jack's are a little bit green. So how I can adjust that is I can go to hue. Hue is essentially the tone of the color. Uh, I can click this here. I can click on a blue area, and then I can drag up or down. If I drag up, it's gonna go purple. If I drag down, it's gonna turn kind of into a sky light blue, which I think matches Jack's colors a little bit more here. You can see that there. Uh, as well as in this image. But something to note is Jack's blues are pretty desaturated. So what I'm gonna do is actually go into saturation blue and I'm just gonna drag those down just because I think this kind of a lighter blue, less overpowering blue matches the, the blues that we see in these photos here. I can also kind of mess with the skin tones here. So I can zoom in on, on Jack here. It's a good looking chap and then I can just kind of feel out his skin tones by doing the same kind of thing. Dragging and, and kind of moving that around, trying to get similar skin tones. And I think that looks pretty good, maybe a little bit less there. And then also maybe increasing the saturation of the orange a little bit. Not too much, don't wanna overdo it, but for the most part, that looks pretty good. Jack's scene is a little bit higher contrast here than ours, but. And I'm just gonna keep going back and adjusting adjusting our lighting here. I just really wanna make sure our lighting is on point. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the lighting and the colors so far. But one thing Jack does really well is he uses split toning. And split toning is where we basically add colors into the scene. And to me, it looks like he has some blues in the highlighted areas and then maybe some, some oranges in the shadows here. So what we can do, we can start in the shadows Go down here, hold option, and that will show us 100% saturation, saturation, and then we'll just kind of drag. And that looks good, and then we'll just slowly increase the warmth here. And that just adds so much color depth to our image. I mean, it looks awesome. And then we'll do the same thing, but we'll do maybe some lighter blues, something like that, and we'll just drag a little bit into there. And already, that really makes it look pretty similar to this photo here. And then once again, we're just kind of moving back and adjusting the tones that we have. Like I think maybe she's a little oversaturated, so. Uh, and we can also play with the luminance. So luminance is gonna affect the brightness of the color. So you can see what this does to her skin. Leave it there. This will affect her hair a little bit. Um, this will affect the background. So we can bring that down, make it darker. So for the most part, I think this looks pretty good. This looks like it could fit within Jack's feed. The edit, the edit looks pretty similar. and. Yes, we can spend more time on it, but it looks it looks pretty good at this point. So now that we've done the lighting and the color, it's time to move on to the editing some of the details as well as some of the selective adjustments and just kind of fine tuning it a little bit. So detail wise, it doesn't look like Jack adds any, any noise grain or anything crazy like that. So we're not gonna be doing that, but his images are nice and sharp and they're a little bit crispy. And when I say crispy, I mean like he's using a, a, a hint of clarity uh, to kind of make them a little bit sharper, a little bit crispier. And we can do that by easily just dragging up the clarity, even just like, even just plus five. This this can really be overdone here. You can, you can just take this to the extreme and go crazy with it. Be careful with clarity, you can overdo it very easily. And I think a lot of photographers do that. We can also go here and sharpen, so you can sharpen. I like to stay around like 40 or 50 
and then I'll hold option and just mask it in. Uh, and then I'll just make sure that it's really only kind of sharpening her, maybe the surfboard a little bit. Um, if I go to 100, it's not gonna do much, but maybe around like 60, and that's just gonna really kind of sharpen her up, make her nice and sharp. And from a detail perspective, that looks pretty good to me. Now let's do some fine tuning. I'm gonna add a gradient over the bottom here because it looks like Jack has darkened these bottom areas of the image just to make sure our eyes kind of really pull to the center here. So what I'm gonna do is just drag a gradient filter over the bottom. And then I'm going to basically just drag the shadows down a little bit just to darken that area, maybe the exposure and maybe even just desaturate it because her arm is pretty orange there. Don't wanna to do too much, make it look unnatural. But for the most part, that looks pretty good. I'll hit enter there. And then, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. Uh, we can just make sure going back, going through all the steps, making sure the colors look good, desaturate the skin tones a little bit. But for the most part, that looks pretty good. I'm super happy with how this photo turns out. And I think it really does look good next to Jack's editing style. And the cool part about this is once you do this enough, you'll actually have enough of your own photos to turn into a grid. And why that's so great is because it allows you to have a super, super consistent editing style, which is really important for something like Instagram, where it shows a bunch of photos on a grid all right next to each other, making sure that you have the similar tones and similar edits among all of those photos and making them look consistent is really important for the general aesthetic of your feed. So once you have enough images, you can create collages of your own photos and then edit more of your own photos based off of previous images that you've edited. And just to reiterate guys, if you aren't sure really how to use Lightroom, this is an awesome opportunity to learn how to use it. Just start at the top, focus on lighting for a while, make, make sure the tones get to where they are, then move on to color and mess with the colors a little bit, and then move on to the detail. And the detail is, is kind of, it's pretty simple. I wouldn't spend too much time on that. The majority of your time is gonna be spent editing, editing the lighting and the color. And once you nail those, I promise your photo will look similar to the photographer that you look up to. But that's it guys, thank you so much for watching. If this was helpful for you, please uh, give the video a like and leave a comment down below like, letting me know what you think. And also, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you here. Once again, new videos every single Friday, all of which are gonna be helping you become a better photographer. And lastly, don't forget to go to my website and download my free orange and teal preset pack. I think you guys will like that. But enough from me guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next week.